helping people so i thought i can utilize my potential in a better way if i were to serve people serve so people so do you know what must be the best trait of an administrator so that uh, that will be an enabler for him to discharge his responsibility and obligation in a very efficient and efficacious way so i think uh, a few things are required first mm. is uh, empathy towards people So second is accountability and transparency. We have to be uh, very transparent about what decisions we take. And so next is uh, non-partisanship. We have to be very impartial in our decisions. You, you are what is good governance actually? So good governance has eight different uh, uh, parts to it. So we have uh, it has to be participatory in nature. It has to be responsive. It has to be efficient. It has to be equitable. And uh, it also has to be accountable, transparent, and honest. So, what is the difference between equity and equality? So, equality is when we uh, distribute something equally among everyone. Everyone gets the same amount of, uh, let's say, anything uh, stuff. But equity is when we take into account the need of each section of society and distribute resources on that basis. But I couldn't get you. But equity and equality, please, I was going to please be elaborate. So let's say the, there are two people, and both have different income levels. If I were to distribute my resources equally between them, then I'd give them fifty-fifty. But if I were to be equity, if I have to keep in mind equity, then I would give more to the person who needs it more. Yeah, do you think that our present system of governance is responsive, people-friendly, and is the, the, the and how is it in the perception of the people? How is it? So there are a lot of uh, government schemes or uh, agencies that are uh, responsive in nature. We have CP Grams, the central uh, public. Uh, sorry, um, we have Citizen Charter that is public responsive in nature. Act, huh? Yes, Public Service Act, but also grievance redressal, uh, centralized grievance redressal system. All of these is very responsive, but there are certain issues as well. For example, the uh, JPAL report said that thirty nine percent of uh, Police officers they don't um, write or they don't consider gender violence in the first instance. They don't report it or they are uh, not very responsive towards firing and mean, writing an FIR. Yeah, what is the main, what is the major malice with the administration nowadays? So I think first is there's a sort of glamorization with administration that people don't. Glamorization, glamorization, not malice. Malice means that affects, affects the. um and in the position of the people right? so first is obviously a uh, increase red tapeism bureaucratization so the process becomes the punishment first the so second is uh, that uh, there's lack of empathy at ground level corruption is uh, now it is uh, all pervasive yes but um, agree or disagree so i think uh, the system is not very corrupt people there are certain people who have become corrupt I don't think the system in itself really promotes corruption in any way whatsoever. We have many anti-corruption act. We have we have uh, again grievance redress and uh, uh, vigilance committees, uh, CBI. So the system tries to be non-corrupt. The system tries to be very transparent. As per individual, so it is a very uh, it goes into morality of individual, and it is uh, we require uh, in a way. Uh, um uh, school level curriculum level inculcation of values to fight no, that sort of thing you agree and disagree that whether we are now a very corrupt administration our administration profile administrative profile as so much there is a uh, scam to it so i don't agree as such that everybody or the entire system is corrupt not everybody the system more or less no so i don't agree no you don't agree no. so these things are okay 
not okay we mm. have issues uh, it is impossible uh, not impossible it is very difficult to have a completely transparent or completely corrupt free system there is corruption in china also there is yeah, corruption yeah. in japan mm, also there are the debate that uh, the specialist versus generalist yes sir uh, do you think that uh, our administration needs so much change gear to to ch- change its gear need uh, some specialist so there are certain um, administrative positions that definitely require specialization for example uh, the forest service that requires some sort of specialization but in general i think our training procedure uh, it enables us pe- enables people or administrators to perform diverse set of acts so i think generalist uh, is fine as well generalist can uh, cope to the requirement of specific nature of job where specific needs little bit of special knowledge like it like dgs control like um, power supply so do we so we needs little bit of uh, technicalities um, even for that uh, economic finance yes sir so, so anybody with any man other than economics background or finance background they need a specialist kind of but there is a requirement yes. so do they can generally still leave up to that thing potential that will do deliver best so it is uh, it is a bit difficult but i think we have a lot of position we have lot of ground level workers that carry specialization so as a team they can do it if they had external help in terms of let's say a contractual posts or something like that so they can definitely take help but i think our training system that we have it does enable us to have a lot of we take to revenue training we take judicial training so it enables us to perform a diverse set of acts so you are an optimist i was find actually <laughs> when we because you just finding fault you are trying to when this can i take it as a positive attribute to of yours when you are this thing so i think uh, optimism should have a bit of realism itself uh, to properly function so i think it is so what about the political system who are the major driver of our, all the policy programs so uh, uh, what do you comment on that so our political system so it has a uh, people specialized people in it as well people who are been in politics for a long time then we had people like uh, let's my, say uh, jayshan my, 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 my simply my reply from you is whether the, our uh, model of uh, democracy is functional or dysfunctional so again i would say there are functionality in it and dysfunctionality in it as well functionality is this in the sense that we have a very large population so having that uh, representing that population in itself has become difficult but we have i think our strong constitution holds us all together and given the diversity that we have i think our politi- politicians are doing quite well but there are obviously dysfunction as well for example only 13% women in lok sabha this time around 18th okay okay